outro que seria usado. Good evening to all of you and a very warm welcome to the launch of the exhibition Superbugs, the end of antibiotics at the Ishweshwaraya Industrial and Technological Museum, BITM, Bengaluru. This exhibition has been developed by the National Council of Science Museums in association with Science Museums Group London, Welcome Trust UK, ICMR and the British Council. I would now like to introduce our distinguished guest for this evening's program, the Honourable Deputy Chief Minister Yamadi Karnataka, Sri C. N. Ashwat Nakayana will join us soon. Dr. Vivek Zavli, Chairman, Cardiovascular Sciences and Medical Advisory Council, Fotos Group, Bangalore. Dr. T.G. Sitaram, Director, IRT Dalahati, and Chairman and Executive Committee, VITM. And Mrs. Helen Jones, Director of Global Engagement and Strategy, Science Museum Group, London. A warm welcome to all of you. I now request Sri K. Madan Gopal, Director of PITM Bengaluru, to propose the welcome address. Uh, thank you, Madam. A very pleasant good afternoon to all of you. Visheshwaraya Industrial and Technological Museum, in its continuous effort to popularize science and technology among the citizens of the country and amidst the current pandemic of COVID 19, I have made all of the efforts to 
and in an exhibition of superbugs, the end of antibiotics. I'm sure this is not perfect relevance due to the pandemic which we are all going through. This evening, we are going to have Dr. C. Ashok Narayana, Honorable Deputy Chief Minister of Dr. Nadaka, who will be joining us soon. He was very kind enough to have accepted our invitation to inaugurate the exhibition. Sir, on behalf of the National Council of Science Students and Research and Development Technological Museum, I would like to extend a warm welcome to you, sir. We are privileged to have you with us and with an encouragement to bring in more such activities to sensitize the population of the and Jews. I would also like to take this opportunity to welcome Dr. K. Sudhakar, respected Minister for Health, Family and Health, and Health and Medical Education, Dr. Karadika. We have to leave the town as an important assignment and as sending the proposal for the event. Sir, our regards to you. We also have with us Dr. Vivek Jodi, noted cardiologist and chairman, Dr. Vasna Science and Medical Advisory Council and member of Medical Council of India, Academic Council of Bangalore. Sir, on behalf of the National Council of Science Museums and Research and Industrial Technological Museum, I would like to extend a warm welcome to you, sir. We know that in spite of the busy schedule treating patients, you have been kind enough to join us by having accepted to be the guest of honor and share your valuable thoughts on the subject for reaching out to the citizens of the country. Sir, once again a hearty welcome to you for the event. This exhibition has been possible due to the efforts of various organizations, including Science Museum Group London. This afternoon, we have with us Mrs. Ellen Jones. Director, Human Engagement Strategy, Science Museum Group London, Welcome to the Museum Group London. Madam, we thank you for joining us in this event this afternoon. Mrs. Ellen Jones, once again a present welcome to you for finding time to join us. We would like to place on records your efforts in making this exhibition possible. I'd also like to take this opportunity to welcome Dr. T. G. Sidara, Director. Indian Institute of Technology, Gohati, and Chairman, Executive Committee of AAPM, for joining us this afternoon. Sir, in spite of the short notice, you are kind enough to accept our invitation. Sir, our regards for your interest in tourism activities and a hearty welcome to the event, sir. We have with us Mr. Yeshu, Director, NCSM Headquarters, who is mainly responsible for bringing this exhibition to Bangalore. On behalf of VHM, I would like to extend a warm welcome to you, Mr. Kumar, for joining us this afternoon. I'd also like to welcome all other dignitaries who have joined us this afternoon, none of the media, both electronic and press, who have always carried the message of science to our esteemed readers, and my personal welcome to all the members of National Council of Science Museums and Visheshwar Industrial Technological Museum to this great event. Lastly, I'd also like to welcome Mr. Shredder, who has been coordinating with us for doing this exhibition, has also helped us in getting this exhibition up in Bangalore. A hearty welcome to you, Mr. Shredder. I would also like to place on records the contributions by the British Council, Indian Council of Medical Research, Welcome Trust, Ministry of Culture, Government of India, and would like to welcome all of those who have joined us in this evening's event. Finally, on behalf of this museum and the National Council of Science Museums, and on my own behalf, I am privileged to welcome one and all who are part of this event. Hearty welcome to one and all who have joined us this afternoon. Thank you. In keeping with the time and the flow of the event, I would now request Dr. Vivek Zali to click the button on the inauguration that you can see on your screen and inaugurate the event. Thank you. Thank you very much, Doctor. May I now request the distinguished guests to start the evening with the lighting of the lamp. You just need to click the button which has your name on it and the lamp would get lit. So I would now uh, start with Dr. Vivek Zahri, the producer. Next, Dr. T. G. Sitara. <laughs> Thank 
And we are unable to find the oh, name is not there. button. <laughs> <laughs> sir, you can click on any job, sir. Hmm. Okay. Yes. Oh, It is all about lighting the lamp traditionally and starting a beautiful evening. Let's now have a walk through the exhibition. And this will be about 10 minutes. used 
on humans to fight the infections caused by the bacteria. This entire exhibit is covered through a mobile application. One can download the free mobile application of from coming to the museum and we have a free wireless network inside the exhibition and you can listen to the voices of these famous scientists and listen to the audios of all the exhibits on your own mobile. This also meets the COVID-19 requirements for one to visit the exhibition. The next section in this exhibit on microscopic world, we have the history of antibiotics development starting from the first penicillium which began in 1928 to the present day. One can scan through the digital flip book. So you can just flip your hand and look into the history of the different types of antibiotics which have been developed. Now after introduction to the history of antibiotics and we now have reached a stage where most of these microbes have become resistant to the known antibiotics. But then new antibiotics are not coming into the market. So biologists are looking for alternatives. Now we move on to the next section that is the human section where the impact of microbes on humans are experienced by different types of people. We have examples of patient, doctor, nurse, pharmacist, environmentalist, designer, etc. Here we have Dr. Devi Shetty, one of the famous cardiologists from the Narayana Hospitals group, trying to tell and explain the importance of antibiotics and how these microbes have developed resistance to the antibiotics and how a doctor and the patient should behave towards the use of antibiotics. This exhibition also brings in some of the most effective media of popularizing the concept of antibiotics through a puppet show where Tina explains how the infections caused by simple microorganisms could not be cured due to the antibiotic resistance. Doctors are looking towards Ayurveda, trying to understand the Ayurvedic drugs and a new study known as Ethnopharmacology is being brought. They are trying to identify the antibiotic many of the commonly used materials in our kitchen as well as in our daily life and they have also found that many of them have got antibiotic cactus. People are looking towards nature to see whether they can identify new antibiotic drugs. One such example we have here is about the Komodo dragon. So Komodo dragon's bloodstream is known to contain a antibiotic element called as DRGN1 which is actually good enough to fight a particular species of bacteria. Basically the DRGN1 is a protein which actually is extracted from the lizard's blood and saliva and is likely to give us immunity towards specific bacteria. The exhibition also has three dimensional views of some of the bacteria which one can commonly come across. Since you cannot actually see them with your naked eye, we have created this setup to actually see many of these bacteria in their three dimensional form. So visitors coming to this exhibition can have first hand vision of the microorganisms and bacteria in their three dimensional form. At the same time, we also have an interactive here in which one can understand how simple microorganisms develop into superbugs. It's basically a game where one can actually host the bacteria on a petri dish and try known antibiotics to kill those bacteria. So more the use of antibiotics, 
more the resistance developed by these microorganisms towards the known antibiotics. So this game can be played by the visitors to understand how simple bacteria become superbugs. So we move on to the next section in the exhibition. And in this exhibition, we are trying to focus on new diagnostic tools which are being developed across the world to identify the infections. Because diagnosing and identifying the infection is the first remedy to get into a proper treatment. In order to have a successful, effective diagnosis technology, the United Kingdom has announced a prize known as Longitude Prize, wherein anybody on this earth can develop a diagnostic kit which can detect and diagnose an infection in the minimum possible time and also indicate what type of bacteria is responsible for this infection. Now we come to the last section of the exhibition wherein the global phenomena of antibiotic resistance, how we are trying to corner. Now this is the campaign done worldwide by different organizations about the importance of antibiotics. India is also not left behind. In India, our government of India has developed mechanisms to identify the antimicrobial resistance of different organisms and our Honorable Prime Minister Modi ji through his monkey bath has expressed the new guidelines and policies that the government has devised for effective use of antibiotics and also to curtail the resistance of microbes towards the known antibiotics. We would also like the visitor to take a pledge that they would use the antibiotics as per the prescription of the doctors and at the same time use it effectively so that we don't expose the antibiotics too much to the microbes so that during the process of microbes evolution they develop resistance to the known drugs. So this is in brief about the exhibition Superbugs, the end of antibiotics. So as we scan through the exhibition, we can find that this exhibition highlights the role of microbes in human health, how these microbes have influenced our lifestyle, how physicists, biologists have been working to fight against these microbes by developing antibiotics. But then, at the dead end of the road, we now have all these microbes becoming superbugs. Definitely very educative and interesting and very, very informative. We now move on. Professor T.G. Sitaram is a civil engineer, professor and director at IIT Gawahari. He is known for his works in the fields of rock mechanics, rock engineering and geotechnical earthquake engineering. He is an elected fellow of the Indian Geotechnical Society, Institution of Engineers India and the American Society of Civil Engineers. He is the chairman of the executive committee of VITF. He is currently serving as the editor-in-chief of Springer Transactions in Civil and Environmental Engineering and several other journals. He is the recipient, amongst many, of some of the awards that I will list out. SP Research Award, SARC 1998, Sri C. V. Raman State Award for Young Scientist, Government of Karnataka, Professor Gopal Rajan Research Award, the Amulya and Vimla Reddy Lecture Award. I now request Dr. T. G. Sitaram to give the introductory address. Namaskar. Very good afternoon to all of you. Honorable Deputy Chief Minister of Karnataka, Dr. Ashok Narayan. Honorable Minister for Health and Family Welfare, Dr. Sudhakar. 
डॉक्टर विवेक जावली चेयरमैन कार्डियो वैस्कुलर इंस्टीट्यूशन मेडिकल एडवाइजरी काउंसिल मिस हेलेन जोन्स डायरेक्टर ग्लोबल एंगेजमेंट स्ट्रेटजी साइंस म्यूजियम ग्रुप लंदन एंड डॉक्टर डॉक्टर मदन गोपाल एंड डॉक्टर एस कुमार डायरेक्टर हेडक्वार्टर्स ऑफ एनसीएस आई एम वेरी हैप्पी टू बी हियर फॉर दिस इनागरल फंक्शन ऑफ द एग्जीबिशन Superbugs: The End of Pandemia. Antibiotics. Despite the massive disruption caused by the outbreak of COVID, VITM has managed to adopt and continue it. Let me first congratulate the Sheshpur AI Industrial Technological Museum. Despite with all these difficulties, they are trying to continue their job of disseminating the science information. to the common people as well as students and also the needy this gives us a hope that the entire community of the science exhibition group remain resilient to the new waves as well as this covid-19 disaster this community has shown its adaptive capability it's up to a new order as you all know Superbox a microbes which becomes resistant to antibiotics kill almost 700000 people a year a figure that could rise to almost 1 crore by 2050 therefore creating public awareness on the issue of superbox is very very critical i'm very happy that vitm is doing this very eloquently and now they moved into a virtual realm so that they are doing this on online so what will be this function and i heard that this entire app going through the uh, the the, uh, the exhibition online is also very unique experience for the students to sit at their home and who are you know even the all common man also can go into this uh, uh, app download this and look at this this exhibition i'm very happy to also say is going to be there for full one month so they can look at this very leisurely at their time available so to learn about the superbugs and this antimicrobial anti microbial resistance is turning out to be a major global public health problem which needs urgent attention as you all know unfortunately the pipeline of new antibiotics is running dry less than 100 years after the development of penicillin drug resistant superbugs are threatening to gain the upper hand in our fight against bacterial infections superbugs are already taken an enormous toll on healthcare systems around the world without new and better treatments that figure could rise to 10 million by 2050 this is a great alarm and alarming situation we are all in and the entire world has witnessed this covid-19 you know pandemic uh, almost now running into the eighth month which is really sometimes puts us in a question that have we done enough India carries one of the largest burdens of this drug resistant pathogen worldwide. At the same time, you know, India is a pharma of the world. Almost 60 to 70 percent of the pharma products come from I mean, manufactured in India. Studies have clearly shown that many stakeholder groups, such as school students, teachers, and also the pharmacists, are not fully aware of this anti-microbial microbial resistance and its consequences. So therefore, there is an urgent need for creating an improved awareness among the health professionals as well as the public, students, and even uh, the homemakers too. For creating such a needed public awareness on this issue of MR, India and UK have joined. I'm very happy to hear that and to develop this exhibition called Superbugs: The End of Antibiotics. So as I told you, the idea. is always in the fourth front i'm watching them from last two years and the chairman of the uh, the the committee tony council and they are very very creative people now i'm not saying this as a chairman because i'm also an outsider and i'm looking at them what they are doing they're doing amazing things and now i think uh, they are also getting a new buses to take these exhibitions across india look at corner of india and that to particularly i would love to see you know goes to small villages towns so that our people get aware of this so much 
So the VATM, at VATM, we have taken one other important step. We have adopted several schools where our uh, scientists from VATM go and uh, show these, you know, models, exhibitions on, on all the other than supermarkets. This is another very major event appreciated at even National Council for Science Museum as well. So I think, you know, there are very top experts here, Dr. Javi is here and many other are here. And even both our ministers and doctors, hopefully we will hear from them, you know, much more along the description. So I think this, uh, you know, opportunity to thank the ITM to invite me to be here. Last word I would like to say, there is a lot of knowledge in the Indian knowledge system. So we need to really explore some of the things which we were practicing at you know, at our homes and uh, either as a rituals or whatever it is called. So that we need to again bring back, you know, starting with you, Namaste. You know, now this handshake is gone. <laughs> so this is the, the beautiful thing. So there is a lot of things to explore in the Indian analysis. At the IIT Gowati, we made a small beginning to create a center for Indian knowledge system wherein we would look at, you know, what we call Lokavidya which is available among in our villages, small towns, and even our homes, to bring it to the mainstream and evaluate through the scientific principles. That's really uh, fantastic. You know, even uh, I have met actually Dr. Bharat Adhwa, who did a curcuma, that is Haldi, you know, a lot of innovations, which is the uh, greatest, you know. Such things, you know, we need to bring it back to the mainstream and look at how, how well we can fight these new diseases or new superbugs. With these few remarks, I take this opportunity again to thank all the guests who have really accepted to be here on this day uh, to inaugurate the exhibition on Superbox Day and of Antibiotics. And again, thank you one and all. Namaste. Jai. Thank you, Professor Sitaram. Very well said. In fact, I think there's been no other time than now when Sarve Janaha Sukhino Bhavantu makes most sense. Because for once, all of us are praying for each other's good health. And with the pandemic striking, we realize there's no need to put our carbon footprint with the travel that we used to do. And proof of that is our next speaker, who's right, not in India, but right here with us, virtually connected in the new normal, as we call it. Mrs. Helen Jones, the Director of Global Engagement and Strategy, Science Museum Group, London. The team works with colleagues throughout the group to sustain and coordinate key relationships in the UK and overseas. She runs the postgraduate program for training and research in conservation in collaboration with the Royal College of Art and Imperial College. She was also the head of planning at the Victoria and Albert Museum UK before moving to the Science Museum in 2008. Request you, ma'am, to now deliver your address. Thank you very much indeed. So, good afternoon, everyone. Or, as it is for me in a sunny but very cold London, good, good morning. So, yes, I'm Helen Jones, and I'm very pleased and honoured um, to be with you in such distinguished company this morning, uh, representing our chief executive and director, Sir Ian Blatchford. So as um, is rather common these days, I'm going through a mixture of emotions. We're all absolutely thrilled in the Science Museum that Superbox is opening at VITM in Memorial Hall. I'm rather admit that your museums are opening while ours are still closed for another week or so. And I'm also disappointed that I can't be with you in person to meet friends like Mr. Kumar again and to hopefully make new friends. But at least technology means that we can be together digitally. It's not the same, but it is a lot better than nothing. Much better. And I'm very glad that we're all here together. In the bigger picture, who could have imagined a year ago that the world would be in such a state? Our thoughts are with all of those affected by the COVID-19 pandemic. It's been very humbling, and a glimpse of how rapidly humankind can be overwhelmed. And of course, we face lots of other challenges on the global scale. Climate change is one, and antibiotic resistance is another, as we've heard. Yet, there are grounds for optimism, as this exhibition shows. 
Science can provide solutions for the COVID-19. There are vaccines on the horizon. And these have come about through international research collaboration, the only way to get effective results. Science is a global endeavor. And the huge international research effort to reduce the threat of antibiotic resistance is already underway. Alongside the endeavors of scientists and other professionals, there are things that we can do. Firstly, understand the issues, and then to, result, to reduce the threats through our own choices and behaviors as individuals and in our communities. Visitor feedback tells us that these messages come across in the Superhost exhibition and the Associated Events Programme, which I know has been particularly strong in India. We need as many people as possible to see it, and several countries around the world now have their own versions of this exhibition. Our own work as a science museum group and as professional science communicators depends on international cooperation too, and we've absolutely loved working with the National Council of Science Museums. Although Bengaluru is the last venue in India for Superlux, we want this to be a lasting partnership, and we're already planning our next collaborative projects. It takes a lot of people and organisations to make these things happen, as we all know, and we've started to hear. So Mr Kumar, thanks to you and your colleagues in the National Council of Science Museums for all you've done and continue to do with us, especially in such difficult circumstances. Thanks to Mr. Gopal and the team for doing such a great job in this exhibition as we all just saw. I hope that we may work with you again and that Sarian and I will be able to visit in person. I know that India has, the India tour of Superbus has been greatly supported by the India Council of Medical Research and that's much appreciated. And we're all extremely grateful to the Chief Council India, and in particular Welcome, which funded the Superlux project. And of course, there wouldn't be an exhibition without my wonderful colleagues in the Science Museum, including exhibition curator Sheldon Packman, who I believe is on the line today. So I'm really glad that the exhibition is open. I hope it can stay open, and I hope it's a success. And furthermore, I hope that everyone here stays safe and well for the future. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, Ms. Helen Jones. Very well said that it's all about the optimism that we hold that one day we shall meet in person. Till then, virtual connections definitely stay. Dr. Vivek Zabli is the Chief Cardiothoracic and Vascular Surgeon and Chairman of Department of Cardiovascular Sciences, Fortis Hospital, Bangalore. A pioneer in minimally invasive cardiac surgery in India, he has performed over 18,000 cardiothoracic and vascular surgeries to date. He performed India's first beating heart bypass surgery in 1992 and is also known for India's first awake cardiac surgery, that is a surgery without general anesthesia or ventilator done under continuous high thoracic epidural in 1999. The founding member of the International Society of Minimally Invasive Cardiac Surgeons, Dr. Zagli is the only Indian on the editorial board of its journal, Innovations in Cardiac Surgery. He is also the council member of the Asian Association of Cardiothoracic Surgeons and is an amazing speaker, a fan for me to listen to Dr. Zagli. Thank you. Am I audible? Yes, sir, you are. Thank you. Thank you and greetings to all of you. Good afternoon. I am really heartened to see that you have kick-started this particular awareness program from the Science Museum, which is a very popular museum of Bangalore City. I think nobody can underwrite the importance of this campaign. There is a lot of feeling that if the humanity is going to get jolted and harmed, most probably from that door, without our knowledge, some biological catastrophes will happen. The front runner of the catastrophe are the superbugs if the antibodies run out. With that, let me come to the next slide. My slides are not moving. Uh, is there anything that you could help me to do? Rashmi? My slides are not moving. Oh, okay, let me 
Can you, can you see my slide? Yes, yes sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So it's a man-made disaster where we have come to the door of it. In contrast to bacteria which have been in existence for millions of years, antibiotics are there in a century and a half old. In this short period of time, we have learned about antibiotics because the bacteria have acquired resistance to most of the available antibiotics. It's very uh, amusing to see that Alexander Fleming in 1928, when he brought out penicillin, he also warned in 1928 that the thoughtless person playing with penicillin treatment is morally responsible for the death of the man who succumbs to infection with penicillin resistant organisms. And how true it has come to be. The antimicrobial stewardship. So action plan is more important than going on talking about how the disease is going. Antimicrobial stewardship has taken an important center stage, at least in my hospitals, and it should be likely in all the hospitals, may it be private or government hospitals in India, especially the government hospitals. The use of appropriate, what is antibiotic stewardship? Use of appropriate antibiotic, using it for the appropriate duration, and necessarily going on using it for a week and two weeks. Starting pseudo antibiotic only after checking the nurse, put on urine, pus, etc., for the correct organism and the correct antibiotic. Stopping or toning down the higher antibiotic injections to lower antibiotics and tablets. Not administering antibiotics in unnecessary situations such as the viral infection, which is very common in our practices. The next slide, uh, antibiotic use in medical practice, it could be prophylactic, empirical or specific. Prophylaxis is when you are administering antibiotics to prevent infection, it is called prophylaxis. This step is towards prevention of infections due to inoculation of staphylococci into a surgical incision and is commonly used in surgery. But then the largest abuse has been here both the hospitals, government and uh, private. So some kind of stewardship, some kind of regulation and some kind of supervision is most important. The next would be the empirical antibiotics. Empirical antibiotics are those which are administered when infection is suspected but not confirmed. As per the hospital policy, at least in my hospital, a reasonable broad spectrum antibiotic like a combination of piperacillin and tazabactam, which is our practice, we administered empirically, changed or discontinued once the culture and sensitivity report is made available. Should culture reveal absence of infection, the empiric antibiotic is seized. If the sensitivity indicates a requirement of a broader or a narrower spectrum, accordingly changes are made and escalation or de-escalation is done specific antibiotic use. The specific class of type of antibiotic is indicated by the culture and sensitivity report and may be instituted to treat that infection. The duration and the combination of therapy is usually guided by the hospital policy and every hospital must have a very strong empowered centralized infection control committee. The anesthetist and the microbiologist should be an important part of this committee who are the hubs to which all the spokes meet. But in our real world, if you look around us, still in many institutions, individual whims and fancy do still have a scope and that has to be abolished sternly. The next slide, infection control committee and the processes. I, when 40 hospitals in Bangalore began as Bokhart Hospital, I made my anesthetist take keen interest along with my microbiologist and he devoted himself and he now controls the infection control committees across 40 hospitals of India. Those processes have to be very immaculate, strong and empowered. Antimicrobial stewardship itself is one process. A document has to be there on the hospital intranet and everybody at a flick of button should be able to reach the uh, stewardship document and know what are the uh, processes in the hospital, what are the advices in the hospital. Creating a restricted antibiotic list, again at the click of mouse, everybody on their phone should be able to see what is the restricted antibiotic list. 
and nobody is empowered to use those antibiotics at least after the first two days has to take a green signal from the infection control committee insisting on antibiotic use justification forms these justification forms are, should be simple immediate proof and must uh, be submitted before they start using higher antibiotics one on one discussion with doctors should be going on constantly my infection control committee meets every 15 days and we have uh, with all the stakeholders a very clear clean and amicable relationship auditing exist of existing practices and finding course corrections is also important and that has to be done periodically antimicrobial stewardship there is a mechanism where in choice of antibiotics their combinations days of use are monitored by a group of healthcare professionals and suitable advices are provided towards healthier practices the antimicrobial stewardship team also monitors de escalations more than 3 antibodies in any patient are looked at with wide eyes antimicrobial stewardship committee consists of senior doctors microbiologist infectious disease specialist infection control nurses and hospital administrators they meet at regular intervals to discuss the success of their program as well as strategizing future plans our team has a tool in my hospital group potis we do this every 15 days the next is the creating a restricted antibiotic list the restricted antibiotic list these are the restricted antibiotic list in our group colistin you know you can just i bought it i will not bore you on that but we are very strict about it and everybody has to be very strict about it and in india the government hospital the university hospital the teaching hospitals where the professors could be very uh, big in the strength i think there is a stronger case to be very firm on the infection control committee and power bank in this hospital optimizing antibiotic use hospital infection control committees they should be monitoring appropriate type dose route and duration of antibiotic are important choosing the type and duration of antibiotic should be monitored by surgical and infection control committees variables involved in surgical prophylaxis fall into the realm of anesthesiologist because they are the hub which connect all the spokes whether it's urology neurosurgery cardiac surgery it is vital to keep the anesthesiologist in the loop to ensure control on the surgical prophylaxis other variables involved in surgical site infection such as maintaining normal blood sugar which is vital today if i go cardiac surgery in india 70% of my patients are diabetic so keeping them in glycemic is one of the most primary precaution that i take to avoid infections and avoid unnecessary use of oral antibiotics temperature controls oxygen saturations and administering additional doses of antibiotic after every fourth hour during the hemorrhage and hemodilation i must calculate accordingly these are also responsibilities of the doctors concerned the uh, antibiotic justification form all clinicians are informed that these forms have to be filled in restricted antibiotic and this is the kind of form that we use in fortis the uh, compliance to submission or justification at my hospital fortis this you can see in the last 3 months what has been the compliance it has been improving and we are now reaching very near to perfection in my hospital but that should be a story in every hospital group of india most of the private hospitals have big empowered quality departments and these kind of things are normal i think all the government and teaching hospitals this kind of discipline culture is actually a high time that it came everywhere the uh, discussion with the stakeholders it is very important to appraise the stakeholders of their status and their compliance status of their colleagues towards these policies it is prudent to take them along and get their buy in to for successful implementation of the anti microbial stewardship attitude of never say never and never say always works best at my hospitals meetings are held at every 15 days and every quarterly with the entire gamut of stakeholders across the country the 62 hospitals that we have the uh, if you look at this graph 
the surgical prophylaxis pan 40s if you see in those last 5 months the the prophylaxis compliance that we should give only two doses or only 24 hours etc has been ever increasing and i am sure by this year end will be reaching far near perfection but again that has to be a story of every hospital the uh, achievements at my hospital a antibiotic stewardship is now can you mute your speakers please antibiotic stewardship is now strictly followed across all the 40 hospitals of india the nodal for controlling them is in bangalore specialties like cardiac surgery my department we have brought down the use of prophylactic antibiotics now only to two doses and there are many departments where we don't use prophylactic antibiotics at all in my department patients who are getting a prosthesis like a heart valve or the orthopedic guys who are using a joint prosthesis we may use two doses or 24 hours doses but a case like bypass surgery is possible not to use antibiotics at all all parameters and outcomes are updated on the fortis intranet in our own website and our intranet weekly so at any time give me only one more slide i am done i got this call from this number pardon i am anand i am from hello can you listen can you mute your uh, speakers please all parameters and outcomes are updated on the our hospital intranet every week and are available to be viewed by all administration managers all the doctors juniors and seniors freely we will be soon going on about our these parameters open to the world on the internet if every hospital is stringent on data collection and transparent on allowing it everybody to see that then what happens tomorrow at the prime minister office health minister office or all the regulators office they will be able to at a click on button view the whole country or the whole state or the whole city and accordingly take appropriate measures these are difficult uh, fruits little high hanging i hanging as we ex expect so if some amount of uh, push is done in the hospital and some amount of stick along with the carrot is used i think it can become a low hanging fruit so in conclusion appropriate antibiotic use is everyone's business though abuse and not only the infection control committee the abuse of antibiotic may not appear to harm the facility society and country at large in the immediate time it is definitely not desirable in the long run all efforts must be made by the healthcare facilities administrators clinicians and the government to curtail inappropriate use of antimicrobial agents otherwise from the back door this calamity may come and wipe out humanity thank you very much thank you dr zavli for those words of caution and uh, the attitude i think especially with the pandemic that all of us should adopt is never say never never say always perfectly said like always a wonderful educative talk thank you very much i now request shri s kumar the director ncsm to propose the vote of thanks but before that uh, the deputy chief minister of karnataka honorable dr c n ashwath narayana has sent in his best wishes and said that he could not join us because of an emergency meeting that he's been called to and therefore in keeping with time i now request shri s kumar the director ncsm to propose the vote of thanks yeah good afternoon everybody present here and good morning to friends from uk good morning sir namaskar the honorable dignitaries present today in this virtual live opening of the exhibition our most valued invited guests ladies and gentlemen young scientists and researchers focus on media who are present here at vit bangalore It is my privilege to present a vote of thanks on this momentous occasion. I, on behalf of the National Council of Science Museum, extend a heart, very hearty thanks to our chief guest, uh, Dr. Ashwath Narayanan CM, the Honorable Deputy CM, for sending his kind wishes for the exhibition, and also to Dr. K. Sudhakar, 
the Honorable Minister of Wales, Family Welfare, the Department of Medical Education, Government of Karnataka, for sending his kind wishes for the exhibition. I would then extend my gratitude and thanks to Dr. Vivek Javli, the Chairman of Chairman Cardiovascular Sciences and Medical Advisory Council, and the and member Medical Council of India Academic Council, Bangalore, for his detailed presentation and uh, inspiring presentation on the uh, AMR and for awareness of the public. So we are thankful for your kind presence here, sir, also. I would also like to thank Ms. Helen Jones, Director of Global Engagement and Strategy, Science Museum Group London, for her virtual presence in this inaugural event. The collaboration between with SNT has been extremely satisfying and useful for the design and development of this exhibition. I would also like to thank Mr. Sheldon Paquin, uh, the project manager and curator from Science Museum Group, who is present here, uh, in, uh, who is virtually present in this uh, uh, inaugural program, for his constant support and feedback. We thank uh, once again to SNT for the collaboration with NCSM and hope that the bond continues with similar such exhibitions and in future. I think we are well, already working for two such exhibitions and hopefully next year sir, we, are, we will be able to do some more uh, such kind of traveling exhibition for the people in India. I would also like to thank the British Council for the support and hope that the bond will continue further. Uh, I, would like, uh, I would like to thank Professor T. Sitaram, Sitaram, Director IIT Guwahati and the Chairman Executive Committee of BITM and also the member of our governing party and the society. Uh, for his virtual presence here in this uh, inaugural program and his wholehearted support for many such collaborative ventures and his overall guidance in various committees for National Council of Science Museums and VITM. So thank you very much for uh, giving us valuable advice from time to time and we hope to, that we will continue it further, sir. Uh, I would also like to thank Sri K. Madan Gopal, Director of the University of Bangalore for his kind presence and hosting this exhibition. In fact, this is the third leg of the exhibition and after this Bangalore exhibition, it will move to Calcutta after one month duration. Uh, his entire team of staff needs a big round of applause for the perfect logistic support extended for the hosting the event here uh, virtually and installing the exhibition and for all the events for this virtual opening. In fact, uh, they have created new panels here, uh, in addition to whatever the existing, connecting the present COVID-19 pandemic and the AMR awareness is really praiseworthy and which, because it has been done in a very short period of time, uh, I think uh, Mr. Sheldon also will also be aware of this. The center has already planned a number of exciting events to be conducted online and offline to create awareness on the issue and I hope they would be fulfill the objectives of the exhibition. I would also like to thank uh, Welcome Trust UK for supporting this exhibition and I am glad to inform that this the exhibition which was supposed to uh, culminate uh, in January has been extended to February 2021. So probably we will have some more time in the last leg of the exhibition at Calcutta. And because without that help uh, this uh, exhibition of such large scale would not have been possible. We hope that the exhibition and the activities planned with this exhibition will meet these objectives and create a public awareness among the large cross-section of population on AMR. I would also like to thank ICMR, the Director General and all the institutions and individuals for their valuable support in content development and providing artifacts for this exhibition. You can, when you visit the exhibition, you can see a lot of artifacts which have been kept and preserved. You can listen to the voice of uh, 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 Fleming on this uh, very interesting uh, phone which is there. I would also like